too often the discussion of research and policy is driven either implicitly or explicitly by assumed stark choice between maintaining a program or defunding it. Too often this framing of policy evaluation leads to a trench warfare between advocates who automatically reject research that's not clearly program affirming and program opponents who look at research findings as a way to shrink government. Okay, so the question is, how do we best connect research to policy? And the answer is, research has to be a little bit like a spare tire, which is to say it's got to be there when the policymakers need a new tire. It's a little difficult to sell them a tire when they've got four that work, but when one's flat, you want to be there with a spare. No one here is so naive as to think that research can trump politics when it comes to policy. But if you want to give truth a chance, you got to do the research to make it possible. We do have, we have challenges because the cultures, both in academia and in the policy making community, are very different. There are different timetables, different incentives, and um, you know, they're just not naturally together. So I think that's what makes APAM so important. One way to minimize the trench warfare in these extreme outcomes is to frame the translation of research to policy differently. For example, an approach could be to maintain an ongoing commitment of resources to the program targeted by the original legislation, but continue to study the problem and search for programs that serve the population effectively. This approach gets us out of the binary mode of maintain or defund, but it's predicated on spending more time thinking about how we approach the problem and less on narrowly targeting the solution. If you come to the conference and you do meet with practitioners and academics that you don't normally get a chance to interact with, it's a great place to sort of bridge the gap between research and policy and practice. As APAM members looking to improve public policy and management, we must remain committed to reliance on evidence, even when it points in directions that are inconsistent with our initial beliefs or our political views. The world that policymakers live in and the world that researchers live in demand different things, have different time frames, have different points of view. And one of the most important things, I think, is for each of them to listen to the other. And policy analysis, where you look at serious, important policy problems, you apply your best social science research and skills to it, your policy analysis skills to it, helps you identify where there are gaps in research where you can apply your research skills to a current problem. Make the connection between research and practice. They're partners on the same path, and they should not be siloed. You pick something that people care about. You pick big issues. You bring rigor and great data to your research. And if you do that, and you do a good job, people will listen, and people will care, and you can make a difference in how the world operates. Don't be shy about drawing implications and making policy recommendations from the evidence. We're able to connect dots that others can't see clearly. Recently, my favorite songwriter, Paul Westerberg, says, we may be the ones to set the world on its ear. If not, then why are we here? If not, indeed, it's up to us. <laughs>